Okay, let me do a tour of the laundry room. This is welding stuff from my husband that while we uh, work on, where we're gonna have like a tool area, it needs to be here because it will stay dry here. Now this is the washer that I'm using, a mana one, the top load and this is the pump that I was waiting for to kind of connect it. I'll show you why, that's why I kept the box. This is a Seaflow uh, 33 series which is automatic demand diaphragm pump. Not any pump works for this system that we have here. That's the pump and that is where we bring in the water. Now down there and I'll show you outside and where the water exits. So, why we need that pump is because we don't have pressurized water. If we did, then we wouldn't need it because, again, that's where you get the pressure from and it's kind of on demand. But since we're using a tank that we fill with our creek water, then we need that. I even do deep water wash because I feel like when you're saving water and again this might be because of the kind of things we do with our clothes um, sometimes it doesn't clean properly and even though this has for hot and warm I don't have hot water here so this is the best that we can do and deep water for that much clothes is that much water but you can see how dirty it gets it is very loud when it's putting more water and it's doing that because I opened it. But it's loud because it's going against this plastic, the wall of the shed, and that is why. Now this setup is very, very simple, but I wouldn't know how to explain it. So I'm gonna leave a video in the description box down below. We do have power. We used to have one of those pumps connected to, well, this would charge the battery. We had a 12 volt battery and it was connected to this pump. Now we bought this one that is 110 and it's connected to power. And I just really can't imagine doing, this is the <laughs> sleeping bag. That's a king, a double uh, blanket. That is a lightweight blanket. And that one in the back, it's a king comforter. I just can't even imagine if I had to do those by hands. But I'm just so thankful. And right now, we are really going through a weird phase of um, overcast days. Like, it's very kind of... Can you see how the leaves are moving? It's, it's actually kind of chilly, to be honest. I could totally wear a sweater at this point. You can see how it moves. So every single thing that I'm drying on that clothesline, it smells amazing. It really does. I'm just so excited to have that washer. And at this point, I know we're in the middle of July, but I have to think about summer. Uh, not summer, winter. Um, once winter comes, it's really hard to dry anything. Even when you put it in the dryer, it does take a really long time because of how much humid, you know, hum for, because of how much water, I mean, humidity, it's in the air. So I really want to wash everything, make it smell nice and fresh, and then store it in Ziploc bags. Over here is the dryer. Now, excuse my stuff for washing but this is an old Maytag kind of messed it up with something and now it's stained and it works super good I've tried it but the only problem I have is that the kind of connection that it has I'm waiting for an adapter to kind of be able to plug it to the wall or to the outlet so right now it's not in use but it does work um, you know this kind of color and appliances tell you that they're old 
but oh my goodness, so much better than the new ones. I, at least I feel like it. Now, ignore my floors. They're not super clean because this is a shed. So when we're not using it, or if we think that it's gonna rain, we just close it. We just have to give a little kick. We just close it like that. And this is a Craftman shed. And we have, let me show you now the connections. So this is where we keep the water. We put something so it doesn't get moldy inside. So that's what that Folgers is. It does have that net on top. So all the things that fall from the tree don't clog the opening. Because for the winter, we do have a very DIY gutter system from this tiny roof, but it works. Uh, however, how we fill it up is with the hose that comes from the creek. Same way I was doing the laundry over there. Well, now I'm doing it over here. I mean, like I filled this up and this is the outlet for the washer. So once it turns on, the pump turns on and it pumps water through here. And this is the water coming out. Now, as you know, laundry and sink water and even shower water, it's gray water, which means that you can even water your plants. So we water. Now, I think I mentioned in another video that we're building a little something over here and so we're leveling it this is our just part of the materials we're recycling that were from the yurt platform as you can see right there and so this right here it's gonna start to change super soon and I really can't wait but let me show you This is where our little guest house is gonna be and what we're gonna be using for the winter. Now those bags are bothering me. So let me show you what they have. Water bottles. <laughs> you get charged a deposit every time you get a water bottle. So we put them in these green bags and we took it, to, well, we take them to our recycling center where they send you the money back. And all that, all that, there's more going that way, are just blackberries. Now, it is growing kind of out of control, so we are pruning so we can get to them. Because, look, those over there would never be able to get them. Let me see if I can show you. There are some black ones already. So, we are kind of making paths to get there. Now, I don't know if you remember, but some time ago I shared with you guys kind of the plan that we had for building and all this were the trees that were up in this one acre that we cleared. So little by little, we are putting them all over there because we need to clear this. Like this is the area that needs to be cleaned. As you know, this is the home for lots of creators in the winter, including mice. So we're going to move them over there until we have a chainsaw. Right now our chainsaw is broken, otherwise we would be making donuts and make it into firewood. But since we don't have it, we're still going to move them over there. And then we'll take the chainsaw once we buy a new one and kind of break it over there and make it into donuts and make a station for kind of cutting firewood. But all this needs to go. So this is little by little every weekend we are making that pile over there. I don't know if you can see them. Those on the floor. It's getting bigger and bigger. And another thing is that we've been clearing this path along the blackberries and we had to remove some blackberries from here because they were taking over. And we have a yurt over here 
and the blackberries were starting to creep in. And the problem is that a lot of animals live here. Like if I were to go in, I'd probably find skunks and raccoons and a bunch of other animals that live inside this blackberries oh, on top of birds. Birds are just, they have nests everywhere here. So <sighs> the thing with this blackberries is that you have to keep them under control or they will go completely wild and produce very delicious blackberries. But um, the problem is that we have to keep this path very, very clean because during the wind, the fall, bears like to come here and eat whatever is left of the blackberries. Uh, and I don't mind that they come and eat them here, but I don't want them to be so close to us. So yeah, we love the blackberries, but bears love them too. So we did all this path from where the bottles are to here they were all blackberries but we just had to clear this path to make sure that they were not gonna take over our living space and uh, you know since we're building lots of building materials under that tarp over there even though it doesn't show this is what we were able to cut before our chainsaw broke and basically this is an area that we have to organize clean and keep it clean we're gonna move both of these sheds over there or a little bit more over there so we have more space around the living spaces and then we have room we have enough room to have some space for the tools some space for the washer and hopefully by the time that this little that this little house or guest house is done we're gonna be able to put the washer dryer and the fridge in there and that will clear some room in this shed that we can use for something different <laughs> 